guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe, courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today because I do own a 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe with the three row version, I'll have you know, but I absolutely love it. It's been perfectly reliable. Literally, I've never had one issue with that thing to date and I've had it approximately five years right now. So that's pretty impressive. And speaking of, Consumer Reports does give the Santa Fe above average reliability, which is plenty respectable as well. Not only that, you do get America's best warranty, of course, being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. Also, three years of complimentary maintenance as well, so you don't have to pay for things like the oil changes, tire rotations, things like that. So, in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering for ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of the new changes as well. So, having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 santa fe including a new trim level as well for the 2022 model year first one being the se starting at twenty-seven thousand two hundred dollars sel for twenty nine thousand dollars xrt which is the new trim level for this year this one starts at thirty two thousand three hundred limited for thirty eight thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars and lastly the calligraphy starting at forty thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars but that was essentially all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add seventeen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but so then touching on the power plants for the santa fe there are actually two of them first one belonging to the se sel and xrt trim levels this one is powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 191 horsepower at 6100 rpm 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time for that one approximately 8.9 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 28 highway for the front wheel drive 22 city 25 highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is the other engine configuration this one belonging of course to the limited and calligraphy trim levels this one is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 281 horsepower at 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed wet dual clutch. Big difference there between the two power plants, but zero to 60 time for this one, approximately 6.2 seconds. And we will test that out in a little bit. And by the way, the dual clutch does come with paddle shifters, which we will also be testing out in a little bit. But overall, MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 28 highway for the front wheel drive, then 21 in the city, 28 on the highway yet again for the all wheel drive. But so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our Santa Fe, I did want to mention the drive modes. So there is a circular dial just to the right of the shift buttons. And by the way, when it comes to changing the gear and all of that, it is actually shift buttons as opposed to a traditional shifter. So R for reverse, P for park, M for neutral, D for drive, in case anybody was curious about that. But back to the drive modes, they will include comfort, sport, eco, smart, and snow, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, and all wheel drive system engagement as well. And speaking of that last one, there's actually an all wheel drive lock button right in the middle of that circular dial and that is going to lock this thing in all-wheel drive mode so when it's snowing out here in Pennsylvania go ahead and press that and you're not going to have any issues with the H-Track all-wheel drive system here on the Hyundai so that is what that is for but anyways now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here well, let's test out the paddle shifters here first they are a very high quality feel I do like them they're not a basic black plastic or anything like that but let's put them to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right you guys so we are in first gear here we go huh actually not that bad they actually react pretty darn quickly but that's right I know why we have the wet dual clutch that is why I'm so used to testing paddle shifters in Hyundai and they have a little bit of a delay to them because they use the traditional eight-speed automatic that they use in so many of their vehicles but with the wet dual clutch I almost forgot they actually do react pretty darn quickly so that is why that was happening for me so cool paddle shifters do react quick I love that but anyways let's now give full control back to the Santa Fe and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed in three, two, one. Off we go. There it is. 
No turbo lag, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm going uphill too, so it's a little, yeah. Anyways, acceleration is plenty fine, 100%. Not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway for sure. Love that acceleration. Plenty of an acceleration for what the Santa Fe is without a doubt. Zero to 60 and 6.2 for any SUV is dang impressive if I'm being honest. So love that acceleration. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 117 feet, which is quite impressive if I'm being honest. 117 feet is amazing. Usually with SUVs, even mid-sized SUVs, it comes in at upper 120s, if not 130. So 117 is plenty fine without a doubt and i do feel like having just stopped right now hyundai has improved upon their braking feel with the santa fe comparatively speaking to the previous model years because in the past it's been a very soft braking feel by all means this isn't a firm braking feel but still i do feel like they have improved upon that braking feel so i do like coming to a stop in this santa fe but anyways then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it is 100% on point. I've always said that in the Santa Fe, and it's no different for the 2022 model year. Definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely, even without an adaptive suspension or anything fancy. So definitely like the ride quality in this one. As far as steering feel goes, it's kind of on the looser side of things, but I will say when you adjust the driving modes, like I was mentioning previously, it does give the steering feel a much heavier weight, but still, I'm still not 100% even with it in sport mode. It does tend to lean still on the looser side of things, so that is to be expected though. This isn't an SUV, this isn't a race car. Then touching on cabin noise, I was at highway speeds back there, and I will say there was a little bit of wind noise. It wasn't coming from the driver's side window though, which is what I typically get with Hyundai. It was kind of coming from maybe the moonroof, maybe the panoramic moonroof here that we have, the dual pane panoramic moonroof. We'll get more into that in a little bit, but I felt like there was some wind noise coming into the cabin from that moonroof. I did hear that. So did want to mention it. I don't know if it's because of these crossbars that we have on the roof here or what, but there was a little bit there. But anyways, then touching on visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. No issues whatsoever when it comes to rear visibility. Did want to also mention if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy trim levels, you will also get rain sensing windshield wipers. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Santa Fe detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about. So that's definitely convenient. And I am currently looking at a head up display as well and that does come standard with the calligraphy trim level only and that is displaying my speed as well as the speed limit and some safety features onto my windshield yet again assisting with visibility but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe all right so here she is you guys the new 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe finished in stormy sea in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name, but let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Large chrome front grille will come standard across the board. And I will say it is a dark chrome like you're currently looking at if you were to go with the calligraphy trim level only. Also, you will get a unique front bumper with front skid plates if you were to go with that new trim level being the XRT. So wanted to mention that as well. And that is what I'm currently showing you guys right now because there was actually one sitting on the lot. So figured I'd show it to you guys. But anyways, to the corners there, front air curtains, do come standard helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination you will find some silver accents on the lower portion of that front bumper definitely look good as well to the sides led headlights do come standard across the board and they will come with led accent lighting as well led daytime running lights and they do come with of course the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there and high beam assist coming standard across the board for all trim levels as well meaning if you have your high beams on at night and the vehicle senses a car coming in the opposite direction it's going to dim that back to low beams and then when that car is gone it's going to put it back up to high beams then for you so it's a very convenient feature also when to mention to you guys as far as where the headlights are because it is a little bit different than other manufacturers out there you would think the upper portion would be the headlights but it's actually the led daytime running lights but then down below is where the actual headlights are located so the low beams are going to be on the outside Side, and then the high beams are going to be located on the inside and they're kind of tied together with this front grille so 
definitely a very cool look to it so I did want to mention that but anyways that about rounds out the front of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Santa Fe all right so yet again climbing into the woods for you guys for this side profile roof rails do come standard on the SEL trim level and up we'll actually get a roof rack for the XRT and if you haven't noticed already the XRT trim level is kind of that off-road look that is what you're going to get with that particular trim level at least rear privacy glass does come standard across the board body colored door handles for the SE and SE L. Then you're going to get some satin chrome accents on them for the limited dark chrome accents then for the calligraphy. Then when it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors heated with LED integrated turret signals for the SEL trim level and up. Power folding for the limited and calligraphy trim levels and then there will actually be gloss black side mirrors again for the XRT trim level only. Body colored side skirts coming with the calligraphy matte black side skirts essentially for all other trim levels. So that's going to be one of those big differences when it comes to exterior appearance. Also body colored fender accents sense around the wheel well that is again going to come with the calligraphy trim level only other trims it's going to be finished in matte black in case you were curious then take a look down at the wheel configurations 18 inch alloy wheels coming with the se sel and xrt trims 19 inch alloys for the limited and 20 inch alloys which is what you guys are currently looking at for the calligraphy you will actually get side steps then if you were to go with that xrt trim level so Anyways, a very nice looking side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Santa Fe. All right, and so now since we are around back all the way to the top there, you do have a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, LED tail lights. You will have to go with the limited or calligraphy trims. It is gonna be optional then on the SEL, but it's a very nice look to it. And I definitely like the LED light bar going across, tying the two tail lights together. That looks good. Of course, you got the Santa Fe badging back there as it has been for generations now which is pretty cool if you see the h-track badging that is going to be for that all-wheel drive system every manufacturer names their all-wheel drive system of course hyundai's is named h-track then just below it all you will find some silver accents on the lower portion of that rear bumper with a single exhaust outlet finished with a chrome tip kind of integrated into the rear bumper i think it's a pretty cool look but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next then as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around back of the Santa Fe, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free smart tailgate if you were to go with a limited or calligraphy trim level. So simply just walk up to the back of it and it's going to open up that way. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 36.4 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the second row does fold down, bumping that up to 72.1 cubic feet. Definitely a good bit there. Did what I also mention in that cargo area, there is some in-floor storage. You just simply lift up underneath. Right beside that in-floor storage, you're going to find a tire inflator kit. But I do like that the in-floor storage is there. Power folding second row, by the way, comes with the limited and calligraphy trim levels if you wanted that. You will find some cargo lighting back there. But the interesting thing was, throughout the rest of the interior, there is LED cargo lighting. However, in the cargo area, there's actually halogen cargo lighting. So wouldn't mind it if they throw in an LED just for it to be all pretty universal when it comes to that. But anyways, can also find some grocery bag hooks back there. And there is also some cargo tie down anchors and there is a rear cargo cover back there then as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the cargo area of an SUV. But then making our way up to the second row legroom, that is going to come in at 41.7 inches, which is pretty impressive for reference. I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I had in that second row did want to also mention those second row seats they are reclining second row seats which is pretty cool then if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy trims like we have today they are heated rear seats and by the way those heated seat buttons are located on the side doors right next to the window buttons in case you were curious it's not actually located like right under the air vents or anything like that so Anyway, speaking of, rear ventilation does come standard across the board. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard. You will also find dual rear USB charging ports so both kids can charge up their tablets in the back. I love that. Also, a 115 volt power outlet. Kind of surprised to see that. So you can charge up your hair straightener or drill or whatever you want to do back there. Rear window sunshades then coming on the limited and calligraphy. And that's one of my favorite parts because when you're driving a small child or a newborn home from the hospital, 
that is going to be a brilliant thing because it prevents the sun from completely blinding them on the drive home so and they work so much better than the walmart version that you can get so always go with the manufacturer version when it's available and when you got the money to do so anyways then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the se a way power driver's seat with power lumbar coming with the sel trim level and up heated front seats with the sel trim level and up leather seating with the limited and calligraphy that's how you're going to get that four-way power lumbar again for the limited and calligraphy driver's seat leg cushion extension again limited and calligraphy eight-way power passenger seat same trim levels ventilated front seats same trim levels memory settings for the driver's seat same trim levels. so essentially when it comes to seat comfort when it comes to all of the extra features with the seats definitely go with the limited or calligraphy trims that's how you're going to go ahead and get that but anyway seating was plenty comfortable absolutely no issues with that whatsoever i can easily see myself taking a long road trip here in the santa fe and i have in my 2017 at least but anyways let's now go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course it is leather wrapped for the limited and calligraphy trims and also heated as well for the limited and calligraphy trims and i do like the feel of it it's like a perforated leather on the left and right hand side so i am a big fan of that but then when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key because this is pretty darn cool you do have your hyundai logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and also the circular button that is going to be a remote start and there's two p buttons just above that that's smart pack that is an awesome feature that hyundai and genesis does and i absolutely love it so without further ado i'm just going to pause this video for a quick moment here and i want to show you guys how that actually works and this is good if somebody parks too close to you in a parking lot and you got kids you don't want your kids slamming their door open into them this is an easy way to circumvent that situation so here it is But so now that we have got that out of the way, all I'm going to do here, I want to go ahead and start this one up. I'm just going to put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which comes standard on the SEL trim level and up. And so once started up, there are two different gauge configurations that are going to come with the Santa Fe. The digital one, the full digital gauge cluster that we have today comes with the limited and calligraphy. Otherwise, you're going to get those analog gauges. But since we have this one today, one of the coolest parts I like about these digital gauges is that you can completely change the look of them when you change the driving mode for example if you were to put it in sport driving mode it's going to give you kind of this carbon fiber and red look that is pretty cool if you were to put it in snow it's going to kind of be that silver and blue hues which is the same as comfort and smart so i guess really the only drive mode that changes the look is the sport driving mode which makes sense but either way i do love that it completely changes the look of the gauges but also there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel when you press those buttons you can actually choose to display a bunch of different things like some safety and information there is a digital speed readout if you wanted to leave that up there it's also a compass which is pretty cool tire pressure for each individual tire so overall pretty much everything you could possibly want up on those gauges as well as how many miles you have left until you hit empty which says 373 right now which is pretty darn impressive and we almost have a full tank not quite but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality now panoramic sunroof like i was mentioning to you guys coming with the limited and calligraphy trim levels only so didn't want to mention that but next i want to touch on the headliners because there are plenty of different options here and i love that hyundai does this cloth headliner coming with the se and sel melange headliner coming with the limited and then you got your suede headliner that we have today with the calligraphy i love suede headliner that's what you find in McLaren and Lamborghini and Porsche and it's so high-end and it feels super high-end as well it's so soft I could just feel this headliner constantly while I'm driving every single day but anyways LED interior lighting coming with the limited and calligraphy interior accent lighting coming with the calligraphy auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls coming with the limited trim level and up and that is for up to three different garage doors dual zone climate control coming with the limited trim level and up wireless phone charger with the SE l trim level and up and by the way if you were curious where that wireless phone charger is it is actually directly to the left of that one cup holder there that is where you just simply slide your phone in there and it's going to be wireless charging for you then it would also mention a pretty cool feature just below all of the drive buttons and all of your 
drive mode buttons, all of the buttons essentially. There's a little bit of hidden storage area where you can maybe hide your purse if you're a girl or whatever you wanna hide there. So there's also a 12 volt power outlet and USB charging port within that hidden storage area as well. So that was pretty cool. But overall, it's all about the attention to detail and I feel like Hyundai destroys it when it comes to attention to detail. They do an absolutely wonderful job. Definitely feels like I'm in a luxury vehicle 100% in this thing. And let me tell you guys, I've driven over 600 cars at this point, so I can tell you that this is a wonderful fit and finish from the two-tone leather seating that we have with the light and the dark leather. Also, all the stitching that goes throughout this one. Also, all of this carbon fiber-ish look found around all of these buttons that continues just above the passenger side glove box and all of that. Even the buttons themselves for the windows, they could have left them a black plastic like many SUVs do, but they actually finished them in this high quality silver finish and they look absolutely amazing. Even the buttons to adjust the volume and the station on the radio, they're actually texturized. So there's this little diamond pattern within them. So Hyundai really went above and beyond as they typically have been lately. They've been killing it. They do an amazing job with interior quality. You could swear you're sitting in a luxury vehicle right now. So. I absolutely love it. And of course, I can't forget to mention the ambient lighting then as well, which is another huge selling point for me. 64 different colors of ambient lighting. That is a ton of different colors. You can choose from purple, red, yellow, green, jade green. There's ocean blue, moon white. I like how they name these colors. Cool names too. But anyways, ton of different colors you could choose from. So that is definitely a big selling point for me personally. But anyways, speaking of to adjust those colors, it actually can be adjusted through the infotainment screen. So let's now go ahead and touch on that eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE and SEL 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the limited and calligraphy. That's the one we have today. Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard with that Android auto apple carplay again for either configuration come standard on all trim levels but i did want to mention wireless android auto apple carplay coming with the se and sel for whatever reason when you jump up to the 10 and a quarter inch screen it is not wireless anymore i wish hyundai would change that because wireless is so much more convenient you would think if you were paying more money you would get the wireless but anyways it is vice versa so we didn't want to mention that but quiet mode coming standard on all trims essentially what that is is when your kids are sleeping in the rear seats it cancels out those rear speakers and then limits the front speakers to a volume of seven so you're less likely to wake those kids up in the back seat so that is pretty cool feature there voice memo system so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date so you don't forget something maybe i also think that is a pretty cool feature you can check out your climate control settings up there as well one of my favorite parts sounds of nature and so without further ado i always do this every single time i hop in any hyundai or genesis that has this i'm going to go ahead and shut up here I'm just going to play these sounds of nature there's lively forest calm sea waves rainy day snowy village warm fireplace and a bunch of other ones but anyways i'm just going to play those for you guys and i will be right back And of course, in addition to all of that, you also have your radio information located up on that infotainment screen. And so for the SE and SEL, you're gonna get six speakers, and by the way, XRT as well. Then if you were to jump up to the limited trim level and up, you will find a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> I think I'm digging the lexicon from Genesis a little bit better, but plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. That was an amazing sound system for what the Santa Fe is without a doubt. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse, you will of course get a rear view camera that does come standard across the board. However, if you were to go then with the limited or calligraphy, you will also find a surround view monitor giving you that bird's eye view. That's going to be the screen to the right there letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Santa Fe is an IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring at this point, but 
also coming standard for all trim levels across the board will include a ton including a blind spot collision avoidance assist system rear cross traffic alert rear occupant alert forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist detection adaptive cruise control with stop and go again that's for all trim levels it's usually on upper trim levels of other manufacturers lane keep assist driver attention warning system safe exit assist and lane following assist as well that's definitely above and beyond and if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy trims that is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors remote start parking assist like i was showing you guys earlier highway driving assist which essentially is hyundai's autonomous driving at this point and a blind spot view monitor then as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here the tech is wonderful that is why i own two hyundais because the tech is killing it it's so much better than just about every other manufacturer out there right now maybe with the exception of tesla but i would say the second place to that is definitely hyundai and genesis and even kia products as well so love the tech including the digital gauges and everything you can do with the infotainment screen powerful engine option for the santa fe without a doubt this turbocharged engine that we have here today is definitely going to get you up to speed very very quickly you do have america's best warranty as well which speaks for itself if you drive less than 10,000 miles per year in this thing the engine the transmission the drive shaft is warrantied for 10 years by that point you're going to want a new car anyways three years free maintenance is going to save you some money there as well the only constructive criticism, and I mentioned it earlier in the video, you guys, is I do wish the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay would maybe come standard across the board. That would be so convenient. But quite honestly, the fact that Hyundai even offers wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay right now, still so many manufacturers don't even do that. So I got to give them credit for that. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok and social media and all that at the bottom of the screen there. Be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. And I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.